Hi everyone, we're in Oklahoma City, site of the 2014 Women's Division I National Volleyball Championships. I'm Jack Hammond with Volleyball Magazine and joining us this time is... Chris McGowan with BYU Men's Volleyball. Chris, it's good to see you again. Hey Chris, we get a lot of questions about when a team on the third ball simply has to give it up, a free ball. Uh, people will say, well, what do you do? Or why did they do what they did? What do you teach when your team has to deliver a free ball to the other side? Yeah, the first thing we're teaching, obviously, is we never want to give a free ball. We're always trying to jump and swing. And that's something we work in practice a ton is jump and swing at everything. And we understand that there are going to be some awkward moments when, you know, I'm trying to jump and swing at balls and this is a tough play. But we feel like, hey, if we train this enough, we're not going to give very many free balls that we're always trying to jump and swing. And so you'll hear us yelling that in the gym a lot when you see kind of a free ball situation. It's jump and swing, jump and swing. That being said, of course, lots of times you can't jump and swing. And so you've got to do something with the ball to give it intelligently. And we like to play it in a place where we're going to eliminate some of the offensive options for a team. And a lot of times, if a setter is available to give a free ball to, we'll try and give it to the setter so that now they've got to go to some non-setting option there. Um, if there's obviously, you know, the setter isn't very accessible, we'll try and give it maybe short to an opposite so that now we can only play on uh, half the court or sometimes two thirds of the court that we don't have to defend somebody there because they're taking out their back row option. Sometimes we'll give it short to an outside hitter so that it makes a little bit of a more dif difficult play to go transition. Our favorite though is to kind of play it over into that, uh, you know, there into their zone one and two, kind of short in between one and two there so that the center and the opposite kind of have to make a choice. And then we can play defense on two thirds of the court and, uh, and kind of take away something that they're going to do. So conversely, if an opponent is giving you folks a, a, a free ball, maybe the best way to ask that question is, what do you What's the hardest to defend? What kind of hard free ball do you think is the hardest to defend? You know, people always want to try and shoot balls deep into the corners. And our athletes range enough and they see well enough that that never works. You know, it's always we go pick that up and we're playing volleyball with four attackers right after that. And so we've seen that happen, you know, every time our, one of our guys tries to be sneaky and shoot it into a corner our players pick it up and we tell them that never works stop trying that shot and uh, and so what we try and do as much as possible when we're defending free balls is uh, you know we feel like the opponents know that too that that play doesn't work and so they're going to try and do kind of what we're trying to do we teach our players there are two types of balls you want to look at there's a down ball which is a ball that's being kind of hit overhead that, but that we don't want to block and then there's a free ball and those down balls we keep our setter in if they're in the back row to dig we don't want them releasing uh, up to the net, and uh, but they stay in and dig because a lot of times players can hit that shot into that corner with uh, some velocity, and so we want to protect against that. So the setter stays and digs on down balls. We move our middle back up a little bit because they can kind of hit some little roll shots that drop short. So our middle back moves up, our setter stays, and, uh, and then our front row does the same thing on down balls and free balls. And what we've asked him to do is take a big step back off the net so just back up a great big step off the net. See if the ball is going to come to you. A lot of tape shots will drop over short. Um, little roll shots that uh, maybe are either mishits or intentional short balls. We want somebody there on about you know the one and a half meter line, kind of ready to play all that. So we say back off a big step. If it comes to you, play it. If it doesn't, now turn and run in transition. And so we see a lot of value in keeping somebody up there a little bit. And if it's this real high free ball that maybe they're trying to play over, go ahead and take a big step close and hit that. And, uh, and so we're protecting against you know, the short play here with our front row. And uh, on free balls, it kind of allows our liberos and our outsides to kind of, if it gets real short, we'd still like to have that outside hitter that's kind of moved over to play the free ball be available to hit the bick. And so if the front row can play some of that, our middles, we're trying to coach them to have some good ball control. So they'll play that ball, get up as a quick attacker, and then our outside still has an opportunity to come and be part of a big, uh, big attack. But uh, we just don't want to let them do that to us where they take something out of our offense. On a free ball, we want to be able to attack with four attackers, um, fast to the pins, a couple of guys in the middle of the floor to control that there. And so we just want to, we want to put ourselves in a position where nothing gets taken away offensively for us by one of their free balls. 
Something like the free ball never ceases to amaze me that when people who think that sports like volleyball are, are simple, and of course you want things to be simple, not complex, but on the other hand, there really is a lot to go into that. So thanks for that. Let me ask one other question though. Yeah. Here we are at the women's Final Four for 2014, and the men's team at BYU uh, has won three titles. You as coach, you guys have gotten to the Final Four. Uh, you're a tremendous uh, power now still. But here's the women with the first chance to, they're the first unseeded team ever to make it the championship match. What do you think about this, this, this women's finally breaking through here? You know, I can't stop smiling. I can't, I'm so excited for them. And uh, I'm, Sean and I commiserate about this, how, you know, this time of year, you're not sleeping, you're worried, you're nervous. It's starting to get where I'm feeling the same way for them that I do for, I mean, I'm not sleeping, I'm nervous, I'm worried, I'm just so excited. And it's been remarkable the run that they've been able to go on and uh, you know, and to see how principled they are in so many areas. I think the staff has done a wonderful job and it's just, I got my start actually with the girls at BYU as a volunteer and it's been neat to be a part of that program and then to see what they've done. Um, I just, I couldn't be more excited for them and more proud of the work that they've put in. And yet another example of how the, the system that you teach men and women in the United States and all around the world is, is showing success from a team no one thought would be here. Yeah, absolutely. I thought they've done a really good job at the parts of the game that are the most important. And uh, it's fun to see, you know, just how how well the girls play within that system and how, you know, how much fun they're having uh, doing as well as they are in the tournament. Chris, thank you so much. Chris McGowan, the men's coach for the BYU Cougars. I'm Jack Hammond with Volleyball Magazine.